Hi everybody! Welcome back to my craft room. I'm Whitney Lucas with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots. And today we're doing a Christmas tree star ornament. Uh, like this guy right here. This is what we're doing today. These little guys here I found on a blog through a Facebook post on a uh, magazine page that I follow. So today I'm showing everybody how we're going to make these guys here. So what I'm going to do is give a couple minutes for you guys to kind of file in here. And I'm going to get my C, let's see. Oh, hi, Donna. Hey, perfect timing. Yes, thank you. It's nice to see you too. <laughs> I'm glad you're with me today. Today is supposed to be really fun and simple. Well, I mean, it will be fun and simple, but as far as time goes, I'm hoping it'll just be maybe 30, 40 minutes. That's including chit chat. Um, this, these are really fast, really simple. I've already made one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I made seven of them because they're a little addicting after you get, after you get the system down. Um, it, uh, it gets really addicting and you kind of make them. I made like a couple that were my test runs and I'll show you guys how those turned out. Cause I, you kind of learn maybe what you need to tweak when you first do it. But let's see. And let's see. Oh, Donnie, you got snow. So even better. So it's actually really Christmas where you are. It's always, to me, it's, it, it didn't get really cold here until just recently. And to me, it's just not, it's not Christmas yet unless it's too freezing to walk outside or even in your house. And let's see. Hi, Martha. Thanks for joining me. I'm glad you're here too. Nice to see you guys. Thanks for sharing, uh, Donna. I appreciate that. That helps me out a lot. So I'm just going to get your comments, you guys, up on my tablet so I can get that closer to me. And then I'm going to make sure you guys have a better view of my table. Uh, but this, again, like I said before, these are Christmas tree ornaments that are made um, basically out of cardboard and yarn. You can't get much more inexpensive than that. Um, very simple. Um, of course, I wanted to make sure that what I was doing correctly, so I tested out when I found the when I found this little tutorial online. I just tested it out, and I'll show you guys my first two test runs because they didn't turn out so well. <laughs> they didn't. Something was wrong. The shape didn't look right, or I missed. Um, I, I somehow had like messed up the, the pattern on the yarn a little bit in the beginning, but it's not crazy difficult. It's easy to figure out exactly what I did wrong, or what I what I I'm not gonna say did wrong because you know, there's only happy accidents, right? Um, I found out exactly what uh, didn't exactly uh, it didn't work out the right it not just okay words words guys words right the correct way but not, nothing that's like crazy in incorrect or anything like that nothing that's gonna you know shatter the entire craft industry okay guys so these are the little ornaments that I found a blog on they're just little wrapped ornaments with yarn and then it's made out of cardboard and some um, some scrapbooking craft paper and let's see oh Donna you live in Texas oh so <laughs> so snow isn't normal for you I think I saw that in the news I know, so it's like, that's kind of like here in Vegas, you get snow and you go outside and play with it and take pictures and then all your friends from Chicago are like, yeah, you're crazy. Oh, I, I, I know that. And I just, okay. Yeah, that makes a difference. <laughs> makes a difference in where you're at for that snow, huh? <laughs> so these guys here are just the couple of them. Now, these are a little bit bigger than the blog had said, but I'll, we'll go through that together. So there's just the ones I've made here. And as you can see, I kind of went a little crazy and I just kept making them and kept making them. So these are the fronts. This is how they would hang. You don't necessarily have to hang them on a tree. After I made these, I realized you can put these on uh, the fronts of gifts. You can put these as your bow on a present for somebody or a gift for coworkers. You could, uh, you could hang these around uh, like a bottle of wine or a bottle of uh, Bailey's or anything you're giving out for the holidays. Some people give out um, alcohol or, you know, you can wrap these around a bottle topper. Um, or just hang them around the top of a bottle. Uh, you put, you could put these anywhere pretty much, but basically the blog is for an ornament. So I left these little, these little stink, these little things on here to, um, to just so you can hang them places. Uh, I just, I like to look at them. I just, I took them to work with me yesterday to show all my friends at work and I just liked having them out on my desk. So I left, I left, if you guys can see down here, I left these little, this little pile of ones. Just on my desk to look at. They make me happy. <laughs> they also kind of remind me of that classic Christmas sweater pattern. They have that, excuse me, that eight points and then the way that you wrap the yarn around there. 
makes it super cute for me. Um, now I did add an extra step and I'll show you guys what that is because on the finished product from the blog that I found, you don't see these prominent, uh, like almost like a square pattern. There, there's, they end a little bit differently, but I found out that's what I needed to do because I can't get cardboard cut exactly right. So let's get started and I'll show you guys all the steps. So what I did was I was on my Facebook page and I follow a page called countryliving.com or country living magazine on the Facebook and then their website is countryliving.com and they do a lot of different crafts. They do a lot of different really cute DIY things and then there's also recipes. They do everything. It's a really cute um, page and um, website to follow or subscribe to. They get lots of cute ideas and decorating things and all that good stuff. So again, it's countryliving.com and on their, um, their website and their Facebook page, they had a um, post about uh, 55 Christmas ornaments, make or do it yourself, handmade ornaments. And so I was just uh, scanning through them on my lunch hour at work a couple days ago. And I came across one. And of course, the picture caught my eye. It was a couple of these ornaments. And so I clicked on the blog. And the blog, um, the tutorial that Country Living got from was from um, a, a page called, or it says, tutorial at Live Craft Eat. So if you go to that, I will put a post on my page of this Country Living post so you guys can see it. And I'll make sure that you guys can take a look. And then you'll be able to see the original blog itself. Because it's not really a video. It's it's not a vlog. It's a blog. So there's pictures and step-by-step -step pictures. And again, sometimes I have a little bit of problem when it's just step-by-step -step pictures. Because I came I, I came across a couple issues that I wasn't able to. And I was like, had to sit and work it out just a little bit. Um, but nobody, I mean, you might not come across that as well, but I'll put, I'll put the blog up so you guys can see it. And then again, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, if you're not able to catch the live right now with me, but you're watching the playback on YouTube, you can find the link to the Facebook, um, post in the description, as well as I will see if I can put the link to the actual tutorial from live craft eat in the description as well. Um, so going forward, I don't have any of the, I don't have that blog with me because once you get this down, it's fairly simple and you can literally sit at, at the table or in, in, you know, in your living room and you can just crank out many of these. So these would be really, really good. Um, as again, I was thinking of putting them on gifts as your bows or, you know, as, as a finishing touch on wine bottles, anything like that, that you're, or, um, anything like that that you're going to be giving out as gifts. They also make really good little, um, trinkets or, uh, what's the word? Like little tiny sale items for maybe, um, the when the when the churches do some of the stuff at the end of the year to, for the families that uh, that don't have much, you can just sell these little guys, and it's so easy to crank these out. Once you get all the cardboard cut, it's just it goes really really fast. And let's see, oh Stacy, my sister's here. Hey sis, and Christy, thank you for joining me from Michigan. I appreciate it. It's pretty cold there where you are, I'm sure. So these guys right here, what we're doing, and let me uh, put this. Uh, let me make sure you guys have a little better view of my craft table here. So start to finish, the first thing you, you're going to need is cardboard. And then all your other supplies are some little tiny little bit of uh, craft craft paper. Like, um, oh yes, Christy, good idea, Secret Santa gifts too. Yes, you can make maybe a handful of them, five or six. You, these are also, you know, depending, because you can make these any size you want. Um, I particularly think that the three by three is a really good size, but you can make them smaller and you put them on those little Christmas trees. So... Um, this right here is just your little packet of scrapbook paper. You can get these in the, I mean, this was already pre-cut like this. It came in a bigger pack, but my outside wrapper had come off. So this one was just like through the year. So I've got Halloween in here and then I've got fall. So then I have all my little Christmas guys back here. And then you can see here's some of the ones I've already used, candy canes. I have a lot of scrap spare, um, scrapbook paper. I've, I do, I've made cards. I scrapbook. I do all that kind of stuff too. So, but this right here, this little package, if you don't have any paper, this little package is super, super inexpensive. And of course, everything right now at all the craft stores is on sale. So, um, I'm just going to use one of these today. It's a little bit easier since it's already kind of pre-sized for me. I'm just going to pull off this back one here and we're going to use that. And it just says, Together, friends, presents, peace, family, and then there's little holly berries and Christmas trees in there. So that's just what we're gonna I'm gonna use to put um, on the back of my paper. So we'll just say that. So basically, here's my scrapbook paper. You need cardboard, cardboard box. As you can tell, I may have ripped this apart just a little bit. 
Um, this is something I, I ordered. I order from Etsy all the time. I order from other uh, artists, handmade artists. You know, you keep them, keep every, keep all of us in business, support each other. So um, it was probably one of my sign orders or something I got, but um, you can't really reuse these, especially since they're the post office ones. So once I get my order in, pull off my tag just to make sure. I kind of just started cutting pieces off of it, and super simple, because basically right now what I want to do is I want to make three by three squares. And so all I did was literally just take this guy here and I just started cutting off the, it doesn't really need to be, see how easy that was? I just cut off the, um, the top part there. So I've already done that for a couple pieces and then here's where your measurement comes in and that I might not particularly be really all that good at because you know, you're cutting cardboard and it's not the simplest thing to cut. Uh, Karen, oh, you used to make these with your students. Yeah, and I also, that is a really good thing. You can make these with small children. There's no hot glue. Um, other than, you know, cutting the cardboard a little bit, um, there's really nothing that's all that crazy. It does take some push pins, but um, it's a really good project to do with kids. And Christy, it is. It's snowing in Michigan, eh? And then um, heavy cardstock is good. Stacy, I'm, I'm not sure. It, I don't think the cardstock matters because... You're using so little of it. If it's a really pretty cardstock and you want to use it, because I mean, you, I mean, on the front, this is all you're seeing, and then you see more on the back if you want. And then I placed a little stamp on everything I make. If if I'm able to stamp it, everything I make, I put a little handmade by from the heart stick uh, stamp on everything I make. So um, you're not really seeing that much of the paper. Now, see, this is the one I follow the blog by, and you see how much open this is. Um, in that blog, that actually said you could put a picture in here. So you can get um, any pictures printed out. You can uh, take those pictures in there and then hang it on the tree this way so that you're basically showcasing the picture. And then should it twirl around, you get a little bit of that design on the front. So that's another option that they put in that blog. But cardboard, scrapbook paper, box cutter. I got a pencil, a pen, a ruler. Going to need some good scissors that you don't mind dulling because I've used these very a few times for cutting the cardboard. I have a paper measure cut. This is like a scrapbooking thing. This is by Fiskars. Um, I actually don't know what it's called. I just know that in the scrapbooking world, you absolutely need to have one of these. And it's, it's super, super convenient for cutting scrapbook paper. And you have all these measurements. This guy comes out here to measure longer paper. And you guys will see me use this uh, to cut our scrapbook paper. And then these little push pins. See these guys here? They have the little colored um, plastic balls at the top. The blog itself had just called for plain push pins, the, guy, the ones that actually don't have the balls at the top, but I didn't have any of those. And then for my very first one I made, I actually used my little sewing pins, uh, which I have right here. I'll show you guys. Now these are much bigger. See, this is the classic little, my sewing tomato. Uh, everybody's got these, right, somehow. Um, these are actually much, much bigger. And I had a ton of these on hand from a previous long time ago project that I didn't realize. I still have two more of these. I, I bought like, I mean, how many are in here? 300 pins. So I had like 900 pins and I was doing this little project with beads. So I had a ton of these. These are actually a perfect size. I did try to take the pins out and then the yarn kind of fell apart, which I'll show you guys. You'll see in that step why you need to kind of leave them in. So I use these little smaller ones. The bigger ones didn't look bad. It's just these are the only ones I have for sewing. So I didn't want to have to go out and buy any supplies. Everything I have and uh, that I use today, I made with stuff I have on hand. So these worked and they got the job done, but I didn't want to use them. And you can just, I'm doing for size comparison. You can see these are my standard sewing ones. And then the, look how small the little bead is or the little plastic ball is on top of these. So that's just what I'm using. You need about eight of them because it's going to be an eight point star. And that's it. So cardboard, scrapbook paper. Oh, I'm sorry. Most important, the yarn. Um, I had used a less expensive yarn of mine, like the Super Saver yarns and, and things. And I realized that quickly, it's if it's too thick, it doesn't look right. So this was, the blog had mentioned to make two, two inch by two inch squares. You can make these any size you want. And um, you um, can kind of guesstimate just as long as both squares are the same size. Thanks, guys. I see hearts and, and, and thumbs up. I appreciate that. It's like my little online tip jar. So 
I cut my squares to three by three when I found the perfect size that I thought. And that's when they all started to look really, really nice. So these are all three by three squares. Now I'll show you guys my first two tries didn't turn out so well. These were my little test runs and they kind of look okay here. But if you can see this one, you can tell here something went wrong here <laughs> and the pattern doesn't look so right somewhere on here. So you can tell this is the good one after practice. And this was my very first one. So even from my very first one to my second one, the second one looks a little better but I took these pins out and a couple of them are starting to unravel on the, the corners. Um, so this was my second one and I used um, a more inexpensive yarn. This is like the uh, super saver yarn you can get um, Walmart and Michaels and all that's like a dollar or something for a huge skein of yarn. Um, so I noticed that maybe it's the, the less expensive yarn isn't so good to use. And Stacey said, how about multicolored yarn? Well, Stacey, I used, um, a pattern yarn on this one and it looked okay. Um, I don't know. I don't have any other multicolor yarn. I just didn't want it to take away because I really like the pattern that shows up after you start wrapping things. So you get to see this pattern that almost looks like a sweater. So I don't know if some of it, um, the multicolor yarn that changes color throughout, I'm not sure. Taste, test it out. And if you do it, um, if any of you guys make any of these, send me pictures. Um, I changed my settings on my Facebook page. So you guys should be able to uh, send me pictures or post them on to the comments of any kind of post. Um, I guess there was a setting that was preventing you guys from doing that. So you should be able to just send me pictures and we'll see how it goes. But if you try that or if you just try these in general, please send me pictures. I love it. But I don't have any of the multicolor yarn on. I mean, I have a huge stash of yarn, but I don't have any multicolor. That's not, I mean, I don't even have a little small um, leftover little ball. But this one was not necessarily multicolor, but it turned out really good. But you'll see here, this is a much, much thicker yarn. And what I ended up going with, the best yarn here is I have a lot of this yarn. I use this yarn to make flowers and other little accent pieces for hats and scarves and anything else like that. This is a Caron brand Simply Soft yarn. It's a little bit more expensive. It's definitely not a dollar. It's probably like a, probably like three something, three something a, uh, oh, thank you guys for sharing. I appreciate that. Um, you, you see a little, um, a little bit higher of a price point on this guy, but these are everywhere in the major craft stores. It's just, I'm, I'm pretty sure what it's, what it's going to come down to is the size. Like this says it's a medium weight and a four, but you can tell this is a much thinner yarn. It's also very soft. Um, as opposed to, let me show you, as opposed to this yarn, this is the cheaper yarn. And then this is the yarn that I started to use that looks a lot better. So if you can kind of see the difference here in the thickness quality, this is a little bit rougher and thicker. This is thinner and smoother. So I wouldn't use the yarn that's like closer to the stuff that you use for like tatting or other things that are really thin, almost like string, but a thinner yarn would probably is, is in my experience that I've found out with these ones I've made, it works out a lot better and things look really, really cute. So what I did, um, I also stopped at Hobby Lobby because I bought this one. Everything else I already had, so I did buy this one at Hobby Lobby. So this is, I love this cotton. So it's a cotton yarn, but I really thought that this Christmas red and red and white was really, really super cute. So that's what I planned on doing today. I will do a uh, bright red one for you guys. Um, not sure if that red shows up really well on there for you. I think, I'm okay, I'm not going to do red because that doesn't show up very well on the camera. Does that show up okay for you guys? All right, I'll do another uh, striped one. Uh, unless you guys want to see green or something, what do you guys want to see? I'm going to use this paper. So do you guys all have a preference? I'm going to take a Facebook Live vote. Do you want me, which color do you want me to do? You want me to do white, red, or the striped one? I think I might, because the, the red's not going to turn out, it's not going to show up very well. I could also do dark green on this too. There's some dark green accents in there. So the, oh, thank you, Christy. Yeah, I just got my nails done yesterday. We did a little bit of mistletoe. We did like a purple theme with some mistletoe. <laughs> thank you, Christy. Uh, Vicky goes red with white. Oh, white yarn. You want to do some white yarn? That shows up pretty good. Love red and white. All right, guys. Oh, no, this one. This The red and white yarn. Ah, okay, yeah, I got you. I got you. We will do this one with this paper behind it. Very cute. Okay. So you guys show, saw me show off the, um, thank you guys. Thank you, Donna. 
You saw me pull off these um, pieces of the box that I'd received a shipment in one of my orders. So I got basically these, and what I did was these are the two by two inch, two inch, two inch by two inch squares. And it wasn't working out for me. I probably only just needed to change the yarn at this point, but I hadn't gotten to that step in my experiments. So I just did a three inch by three inch. So with three inch by three inch, um, let's see, Roseanne, you're late. That's okay. We just got started, girl. You No problem. No problem. So uh, we're making the Christmas star ornaments out of cardboard and yarn. And it's all really quick and simple and easy and fun. Um, I'm particularly going to go with three inch by three inch. I'm going to keep that the same for me. You can make them a little bit bigger, you can make them smaller. Doesn't matter as long as you got two squares that are the same size. And then you can cut your paper to make sure it fits. And you don't need to have any of this scrapbook equipment. There's nothing wrong with a good old pair of scissors and you know the you judging by your eye. So what I did was I cut some of the rest of this box. As you can see, the box isn't really a box anymore. Um, any kind of cardboard box, if you've got a thicker box, it needs to be the kind that has this. Um, corrugate, I guess it's corrugated, these pieces in the middle, the part of the cardboard that does that little squiggly stuff, um, you really need to make sure you have that kind, at least that thickness. Uh, let's see, what else is there, Roseanne? Uh, Sylvia, yes, I do have an Instagram. It's Crafty Thoughts and Whatnot, same, same name. And I post a lot of stuff to Instagram as well. So the cardboard needs to be a thicker cardboard. In the blog that I read from uh, Live, Craft, Eat, uh, the girl that made these had said that she was a stay-at-home mom, or she was just a, you know, a mother. So she had lots and lots of diaper boxes and the diaper boxes are a thicker corrugated cardboard. So what you need to make sure you have is the cardboard. And actually this isn't really, cause I think this has been squished. This is a pretty, this is a much thinner cardboard, but as long as you can see inside there and you see that squiggly stuff, a uh, layer of, of squiggly inside there, you, uh, you need to make sure you have that because that's where we're sticking our push pins. So I've cut these, I've got some strips already cut out. I cut one of my uh, cut off leaves already into strips. And all I had to do, all I did make sure was after I, I, I placed this thing out, I tried to measure three inches wide as much as I could. That's where I got my ruler and my pencil. And then I tried to cut as evenly as I could. They're not perfect by any means. This, there's a little, there's a little bit of a weird wronginess in all of it. So. What we're doing now is I'm going to take one of these guys here and I'm going to measure three inches in. I'm going to cut to get my three inch squares and then we'll show you where we go there because all basically you need is scrapbooking adhesive. I got double stick adhesive tape. Now you don't have to use a crazy amount of it either because um, what's going to happen is now see this is crooked from me cutting it off at the box. All right, so three inches in. So I got three inches this way already. There's one, two, three. I need to do three inches in this way. So that's where my cutting mat down here helps me with this line, and then my ruler on top helps me with this line. And I'm just gonna put a pencil line on here. For me, the pencil line helps me more stay on a straight line um, than anything else. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, no, I still need to cut that edge. So there's one, two, three. Now see, this isn't exactly perfect to give me a three by, you know, a perfect square. So I need to cut this off, but it's also not, you know, crazy end of the world. If it's a little crooked, everything will be fine. So I need to cut this off here too. So all I've done is done three by three. Now I have this little extra piece of cardboard here. That's not going to be a good enough size to do anything with. So I'm just going to cut right here on this line to get that as straight as I possibly can. And then uh, when I cut the larger strips, I did use a um, box cutter for it. So I can show you guys that step. It took a couple different uh, tries just to get it. So I've already got my lines on here. So I'm just gonna take it and follow my blade on that pencil line that I made. And then it just comes right off. This guy is not square. Now you can make a little one, but I don't know. I haven't, I haven't experimented to see if something that tiny would, um, would, would really work out. So. There's always an option you get. You can always try that. So here's my second line that I made, and I'm just making a couple, a couple runs at it to get through all of it. So here's my two squares. Got two three inch by three inch squares. Does not matter what size it is, as long as you have a square. So if you do two and a half by two and a half, or if you've got 
uh, four by four. I haven't done anything bigger than this three inch and smaller than the two inch. The two inch didn't work for me, but I think that, again, I think that was because of the yarn I was using. So I am a little addicted to these guys and you guys will probably see why. Once I did the first two, um, I definitely knew something was wrong because I was getting the, the pattern messed up somehow. And um, I was like, okay, well, don't get discouraged, Whitney. Let's just keep going and see what we can do. And as soon as I figured out exactly what it was that I was missing, it was super easy. And then the rest of it just comes to you so quickly. There you go. There's three inches and three inches. And if any of you guys experiment with these and you, you find some different avenues or different angles, please uh, send me pictures. Let me know. We'll, I'll share with the rest of the group so you guys can all see. Like I'll put it on this post so you guys can all see anything else you guys come up with. Um, that way we can all um, help each other out. And let's see. Call it my sister, Stacy. I call it cardboard corduroy. Yeah, the middle piece is here. This, and here's a better view of it. As long as the cardboard has some sort of little uh, pattern in between the, the buffer part, that's the type of cardboard you need to have. If it's too thin, it won't work because you're not going to have anything to put your push pins into. So the next step here is um, we're going to glue these pieces together with our tape, I should say. This is my scrapbooking tape. I use this. This is basically your double-sided adhesive. Um, this is the more permanent one. This one is not forgiving. There is another kind that comes in a purple one. This is just the AdTech brand, and I get my refills at Hobby Lobby. You can get them online too, um, but I haven't been scrapbooking as much lately, so I haven't had to buy any for some time. But this is just basically your glue runner for, for uh, scrapbooking. And I guarantee you, you can find all kinds of different brands of glue runner anywhere. I'm guaranteed there's some at the dollar store. Walmart, you name it. So this is just my double-sided tape glue runner, and I'm only going to run a couple pieces on one side. So my little bit unique of a situation because I have a white side and a brown side of my cardboard pieces I cut. So I'm going to make it so that the white pieces face each other. Nothing should show through, but there's always that instance, like on this one right here, this guy right here, I had a little bit of a gap. Now that happened because I probably didn't get my uh, square measurements exact. And it, look, it's still very cute. It's not uh, earth shattering. It's still very cute, even though I have a little bit. See, if, you, if I point it out, nobody probably would have noticed that unless I pointed it out. So here's the ornament. That's what it looks like. Again, because if you don't get your measurements right, do not worry about it because I'm not. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is just run some of the glue tape. Let's see here. Let me move this out of the way there. I'm going to run some of this glue tape onto the tops. So I'm going to hold it in a diamond pattern because we're going to place these on top of each other um, to, sh to shape this diamond pattern. This is where your star shape comes in. So if you're holding your square this way, kind of sh place it in front of you more like a diamond. Okay, let's do it like this. Like this, more like a diamond. And then when we glue the other one on, we're going to glue it on like this. So you get what I consider the diamond shape here and then your square goes on front. So you're making sure you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points. So that you basically have a star shape after you've glued them together. And Roseanne asks, where do you, where, where you able to look on Consumer Crafts website, just placed another order. I'm not sure what that is. What is Consumer Crafts website? Do they, is that just like a big supply type thing? Because um, that would be kind of good because I'm always looking for new places to buy supplies because you can never have too many, right guys? So um, starting here is my diamond shape is in front of me and I'm just going to run uh, three pieces on the top of that. And I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it kind of a little bit there. You see it coming off eh, you, you, a, little, a little bit right there. You see that? So all I did was run three pieces there. Now I'm going to take my piece white side down and I'm going to hold it over it so I can get that. And I'm going to just eyeball it to see how even I can get these little triangles. And I'll show you what I mean by that. There, you stuck it together. So here's our piece. And by triangles, I'm saying like I'm gluing this down on top. I just try to make sure this triangle and this triangle 
that you're showing those kind of are the same. Now you might not have this if you have a different type of cardboard that's not two different colors on either side, but that was the best way that I was able to try to just get it as even as possible. And it's not ever going to be perfect and that is perfectly okay. Because again, you saw what I did with this other one that my measurement was probably severely off, but it's not crazy into the world. So there I've got two little cardboard guys ready to go. Um, now that's not the end of the glue. I mean, technically we only need a little bit more when we start putting the yarn on and then that's the end of the, of the, of the double sided tape. And again, as you guys know, that's not, um, that's not that very much to use. Very little, very little supplies. The most you're going to need is yarn and the, pap the paper scraps are really cute. You could also use instead, if you don't have scrapbook paper, I was thinking, um, there are all kinds of different options. You could use magazine cutouts with pictures on them. If there's like a scenery, um, you could use uh, color books if there's a pretty color book picture you want to put back there. Um, what else? Uh, just plain craft paper or um, any kind of plain construction paper. It doesn't need to be a pattern paper. I mean, it, anything you want would work. Anything else other than this would still work. It's basically just you're, you want to cover up the cardboard showing through. See, so this is a gray one that I made. You can see a little bit of the snowflake in there and then a lot more snowflake on the back. And then there's that stamp that I put on everything I make. I put a stamp on it. So this actually works out okay because this little booklet that I bought of the scrapbook paper, um, Oh, Roseanne, that's where the other colors of floral tape is. Yes, thank you for that, because I'd said that in my previous uh, video. I needed to find some other floral tape. Thank you so much for that tip. I'm definitely going to take a peek into that supplier. Thank you so much. This paper is an easy 6x6. Six six. If I'm making 3x3 three three squares, uh, stars, I only need to cut this guy in half and half again. So it actually takes a lot of the work out of it for me if I had a 12x12 12 12 paper. So it's just depending on how easy I do I need it to be. So I don't need that open. All I'm doing is taking this over to my three inch mark here on my paper cutter, closing that, and then bringing it down, and then doing the exact same thing again with the half piece. So now I have three by three squares of paper. Let me do that one more time on this guy. And then that's the end of that. So now back to tape. We're going to tape these papers now to the top of our cardboard. So the little cardboard cut scars, stars that we've already made. So for the first one, I'm just again going to put three pieces of, of um, the double stick adhesive and then put that down on top. And now I've covered up all that ugly cardboard. And you don't, I mean, if... Sometimes this little stuff can be can be expensive depending on your brand, but there's also options to where you know the dollar store has the cheap double sided uh, tape or the tape runners for scrapbooking, but you don't necessarily need to use three things, you know, three lines of tape if you want to try to conserve your supplies. Um, the yarn itself is going to hold on a lot of this paper because. Um, most of this won't show. This is just for, you know, a little bit of accent so you're not really looking at the, the ugly parts of cardboard. So what you have here is the brown has been covered by the paper on both sides. So after we cut the scrapbook paper, we put the paper on top of it. And now, I'm going to put this off to the side. So now what I need to do is we need eight of these little pins. If you use the push pins that don't have the colored uh, balls on the top of them, pull out eight of them and stick them in one in every single corner. I'm going to use, what color should I use? I'm going to use this red and white yarn. So I'm just going to use red. I, I already pulled out eight red ones because they're a little bit, they're a little bit hard and unruly to, to pick out of the big pile. Um, so I already pulled out eight of them here. And I'm going to use all uh, red tipped ones just to, if you guys can see there, it just adds that extra little bit of cuteness. So again, if you have plain push pins, just use a plain push pin. If you have these colored ones, do whatever your heart desires. This is just how I figured to do it. So what we're doing with these push pins is we're going to stick them in the corner of each one of these corrugated in between the two, the two um, slices of cardboard. So that's what it looks like. So all I've done was get it lined up 
to that little squiggly part of the cardboard inside between the two layers and I've pressed it down in there enough to where it's stuck in the cardboard. If you've got bigger pins or longer pins, it will be much easier, but these, um, I didn't really have a crazy, horrible, you know, experience with these smaller pins. And I, again, I told you guys, I, at some point was using these for a different beaded project and I have about 900 of them because <laughs> this, um, these little guys right here, this is a, a pack of 300 and I got three more of them. <laughs> so I got about 900, uh, pins. So divide that by eight, and that's how many stars I can make, you guys. Which next year my sister um, had said she planned on making a bunch of these for a church, uh, like a church sale to fundraiser to, to you know for the money that they collect up at Thanksgiving and Christmas for families in need. Um, these would make really cute little fundraising things for churches and schools or dance clubs, stuff like that. Because let me show you guys. This is what it looks like when you're done. So I've got all these, every single corner has a push pin in it. And if you can see here, I've stuck it in between here, in between the two layers of cardboard through all the little zigzag stuff. That's where we got it. So that's what you work with. And that's how you're working with it. Next step is we're going to start the yarn. So we're almost done, you guys. Um, what I've done is... It does not matter what side you've picked. I've looked at a couple different times and or a different a couple different ways and on every single one of these it has not made any kind of difference where you start at because again you're supposed to be getting a square item so I haven't had any problems with finding a spot. So what I did was you pick a corner, pick a random corner, doesn't matter, and just run a, a bunch of not a bunch, but run some glue right on the corner. So I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna run some glue off of my glue runner right here. I put like maybe like three little dabs. So there's glue. I don't know if you guys can see this. Uh, kind of get a little bit of an angle. There's just a small little strip of glue. And I ran that glue like two times, two, three times of the tape runner. You can actually use scotch tape too uh, because it will get covered up. Um, the back, you have a little bit more showing than the front, but it's not uh, going to gonna like ruin the project. So I've got my sticky tape right here on this corner. I'm going to take my, my yarn and just press it into that on the corner there. And that's how I started mine. So now I have my yarn stuck to the corner here. So you see that? That's not going to come off. And then you see my, my paper comes off a little bit. Not a problem because I only ran a couple strips under here. So you're not crazy. Um, it's not going to fall apart. The yarn itself, once we start weaving it, holds everything together. So here's where you're going to start your project. So <clears throat> I have it glued on the back, right? So now you're going to, I like to hold it a little bit, even though it's sticky, it's not coming off. I hold it here. You're going to hold your yarn towards you. And the best way that I've, I came across with using this is pay attention to the star behind the, the star on the back. So, or the, the, the half of the star. So you can see here the square behind it and not this diamond one, but the square behind it is the best way to keep track of your pattern of weaving. So you're going to bring it down all the way to the corner. You're going to wrap it up behind this pin here, okay? And then you're going to bring it up to your middle one here. So wrap, let me see if I can do this backwards. You're taking from top to bottom, wrap it down, and then come up from behind and go around the one in the corner. And then you go down to the next corner. You see here? Wrap it, come up from behind, wrap it around that corner. Then you're holding it down to the next corner. Do you guys see a pattern coming up on it? And then once you hold it this way, you're coming down, up and around, move down, up and around, move down, up and around, down. So that was one full, one full turn. Let me see if you guys Mm, yes, Nace, I'm not changing the pins. You know, that's my sister, guys. I can say that to her. <laughs> so um, let me know if you guys can't see this this way. Well, I know this angle might be a little bit difficult. Let me move my let me move my water out of the way somewhere. Okay. 
the, the pattern is super simple when you don't pay attention to the top square. You pay attention to this back square and you're going to make sure that it's always even or always even and aligned with you. And actually, because I did that facing me the other way, you guys, I'm going <laughs> to... We learn together, right? So here's down, up and around, down, up and around. And you'll see how quickly you get going at it once you get things situated. So once you get your first full pass of everything, you'll see here you've got one row of everything. So when you're getting ready to start this next one, there's one more, hold on. This next one, we already have, we already have this one here. You move your project just slightly to the right, or sorry, just to the left of the inside. And that's how we're going to start getting, um, that's how we're going to start getting the, um, the pattern that looks like a sweater weave or, or a pattern in the actual yarn. So I've come up here. I'm going to make sure that I have my yarn even with this piece here and move it just a little bit to the left, down up to the second one, twist, and then down up second one. And you're forever moving your project one more link over, one more link over. And depending on your yarn, you may need to pull it kind of tight. Um, this yarn is very forgiving. So if you guys buy this cotton yarn from Hobby Lobby, it will be super, super forgiving. And I don't, you know, you don't have to hold it crazy tight and worry about anything unraveling. Um, it gets really easy. Um, to get things going once you try, well, you know, once you, um, once you start getting things going as far as you get to a certain amount of turns or, um, rounds on the piece, you'll see the pattern start to come up and it's, it just gets exciting, a little rewarding. You're like, oh my gosh, it's turning out. It looks so cute. And then that's where the uh, addictive nature comes because they go, oh my God, I need to make like 25 more and give them every, to give them to everybody at work or give them to the family or I think. I'm excited to put these on gifts this year. Part of my gift wrapping, um, I, I love wrapping presents, you guys. If there's something that comes in a bag, I will take it out of the bag and find a box to put it in so that I can wrap the box and put a bow in. I mean, I just, I have this this obsession with, with gift wrapping. I love wrapping presents. Um, so I think these would make a really cute uh, little extra, it's like a gift with a gift on top. It's like a little cherry on top, but it's another gift on top. So you've got your little ornament on top, and then they still get the excitement of unwrapping the present. So I want to show you guys maybe a better angle. Are you having, are you guys, you guys aren't probably able to see this very well. You guys tell me, do you want me to maybe move my camera a little bit? I can move my phone over. Or maybe I could try to, um, um, let's see. Let me see if I can get these to scroll up. No, that's not working. You guys tell me. Um, let's see. Let's see if you guys have a better view. Were you able to see all this going forward? Um, I'm going to try to get you guys more on the side with me so I can show you here. So here's where I'm at. You come around to this top one. There's that. Come around. Down. Up down up the blog itself had said that when you go down you figure with the corner you're starting off you're going down two pins right so you're starting at this corner you go down one two pins and then come up from the back one pin and then turn down up down and then once the pattern starts to form you can see your straight lines are showing up in almost like this you can almost see that square pattern showing up there you see what I mean? Um, I, Stace, I have no idea what you're asking. You mean don't don't put um, don't just don't do as many as many rows. The pattern itself you want to show up here it won't show up unless you finish it. You see, I mean, this is what we're going with. And this is all I have so far. So, I mean, this doesn't look bad. It's completely up to you and your preference. You can stop any time you want. I personally like this thicker look here because basically we're working down in. Every row we do gets these two lines closer to each other. 
So that's just my preference of, of I'm gonna I keep going just until it's it's completed. And then every time you you start a new roll, so you were getting ready to come up behind this one. So I'm going to start my yarn just a little bit to the left here to make sure this one starts going down on this side. So you're not rolling it, you're not basically putting it, if you see here guys, putting it right next to the one I was just on. Then you come up and then we're going around this guy here and putting it right next to the one that I was on before. Come up right next to this one here. Twist it up. So if you think you're going to keep your eye on the pattern of a square here, square here, square here, square here. But every time you make a rotation of your star, you're going to the next corner. So every time you make a turn, you're, you're going to be rolling your, your yarn around a corner. So you're not missing a corner. My first two um, test runs, I did in, run into wrapping them around the wrong corners. I did that a couple times. So my, if you guys saw, I, I showed you my little, my first two experimental runs. Uh, they weren't, <laughs> they weren't pretty at all. The, the second one looked better than the first one. So that's when you know, okay, well, I'm doing something right. It's not, it's not turning out horrible. And then that's where I just kept going and saying, look, Whitney, you can, you can do it. Just keep at it and it'll turn out okay. And then that's also where I used my, um, you know, my extra pieces of yarn, my little, the junky pieces I still had that didn't crazy, you know, crazy, didn't want to lose any of my good crazy stuff that I knew it would cost just a little bit more. Who cares? I always have extra little pieces or, or uh, little tiny yarn balls left over from projects or blankets. And I got a whole tire basket and Ziploc and everything full of that yarn that just doesn't have a home anymore because there's definitely nothing left that you can actually use on anything. And that was what I used to test things out with. And now see, I'll show you guys this also your, my measurement isn't exactly perfect, but it's not crazy end of the world. Um, you'll see here, I'm pretty much done except for there's a tiny little gap just right here on this piece. Not that bad. And because it's just a little bit of, of the green paper showing through, you can kind of maybe move and adjust your yarn here to kind of cover that. It's not crazy out of the world, but. Mm. So, see. Oh, yeah, so Stacey, you want more of the paper to show. Well, more of the paper is going to show on the back. So it's just a different design. But, yeah, you don't have to make these run all the way through, but the the... Your showcasing is the weaving pattern you're getting here on the yarn itself. So you get this weaving pattern that, to me, it reminds me of your Christmas sweater patterns, and I, I absolutely love it. So this is where you would end on the blog. And this is, let me see. And this is pretty much what they look like, if you can see the pattern on that one. See, this one I used a little bit of a sparkly, I used some sparkly yarn I had left over. But what I did was, in order to cover up some of these gaps, I did an extra loop around the long part. So if I came up, I came down here on this one, and I'm going to kind of nestle it in between there. Coming back around on this guy, so I did one straight down, went straight down once, and then normally you would come up to your right. I'm going to come up the back and go straight down again, and then come up on the right to go straight, and then wrap it once more, come up on the right straight, straight, then on your right. And this was more or less for me to find a way to kind of fill in my little oops. I, I would like to say, I guess it's like a little bit of an oops. And then just making sure I have a double line across the whole front of it. There we go. Okay, so here's where on the back it comes up with a little bit different of a pattern. Um, this is what it normally looks like if you just follow the directions on the blog. And you can put the picture on it. I added the double pieces on the front here so you can see this line. Let me see. You can see a straight line here, straight line here. It adds a little bit more and I needed to cover up some of my little imperfections on the corners where the paper and the cardboard was showing through. 
Um, so now I'm on the back of it. I'm going to cut my yarn and I'll show you guys where I'm going with this. I'm going straight across from the corner, the corner that you're coming off of. I'm going to go straight across over here and I'm going to create my little loop here. So now that we're done doing all of the weaving, this is the time where you're just going to take your pins and push them down, push them down. Just push them in, push them all in. The pins are there to hold the yarn on for you. And see, now you have just the little cute little accents on every corner. So now that I have that, I'm going to cut my yarn. I'm just going to guess here. I also want to have enough so I can actually tie a knot. So here's where I came up on my last run in this corner here. I'm just going to bring it right across. So I came up on this corner. I'm going to bring it right across. So here, right here, that's where I'm going to weave it in to make my loop. And let me see here. You know, guys, I really wish I could get more of a downward look for you guys. Maybe I'll do another one of these with my other tripod. Um, so here is where you can, um, you can kind of just weave these in and out here. Um, what I found easier is because I have the, um, you got a pretty good tight weave on there. So I put the yarn back into my yarn needle. This again, I've used this for my fabric pumpkins. I'm pretty sure you guys all like that fabric. I, that fabric pumpkin video got a lot of love. Um, this right here is a yarn needle and I have a yarn threader. So this is the exact same thing in the sewing world, but in the yarn world for crocheting or, or knitting. Uh, this is used to use with yarn to sew projects on together. You can use this to sew together your blankets, your, Again, I'm a crocheter, I'm not a knitter, but I use this a lot to attach a lot of embellishments onto projects such as um, flowers onto scarves or buttons onto scarves or other things that I've, I've made in the past. So it's a pretty substantial needle and this is a much bigger threader than I'm, I'm sure any of you guys are used to seeing. If, you, if, you're, if you're a sewer or if you're a, a crocheter and you're familiar with these, it's a big needle and it's a big threader. So I'm going to take my yarn, my ended project down here. You put your threader through the top of the needle. If you're not familiar with this, guys, I'm just going to show this step. You're going to put your threader, this, this little uh, metal piece here, you can put that through the top or the eye of the needle, and you hold that there. And then you thread your, your yarn through that hole on the little metal wire threader piece. And this yarn unravels very, very easily just because it's got the two red, red and white. So once you get your yarn through there, let me put this here. Once you get your yarn through there, oh, I just pulled it out, guys. This tripod is not a good one for an up-close project. I'm so sorry. So once you get your yarn through here, you pull it through just like that. And that helps you yarn your, uh, thread your needle. The same, um, the same premise with regular sewing applies if anyone has sewn just a regular, a regular project with just a needle and thread. It's just on a bigger scale because it's yarn. So I'm going to go from where my, my piece ends at this corner right here. I'm going to take it straight across and we're going to go underneath everything right here. Okay. So I'm just taking my needle and I'm going to thread it wherever it wants to go. It's going to go up. I think it looks about like three. Do you see there? That's all I did was go up three, three rows, pull the yarn through. So now it's really tight and it's ready to go there. So here's where, how long do you want your piece to hang? I'm going to guess that that's good enough for me. Maybe about two inches, inch and a half, two inches. And then, um, I'm going to hold that here. I'm just going to hold it with my finger here. And what I've done is I'm going to come around here. Oh, geez. I'm so sorry, guys. Here's my piece here. I'm going to attach it on this side as well. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come down right next to it just to get the three pieces of yarn in and then come out. Do you see how I've got that? So my yarn comes in right here. Here's my loop that we're going to hang from. 
right? You see that there? So I'm gonna pull that down just long enough to however long I want that loop to be. So that seems to be good to me. And now I'm gonna do is the exact same thing. I'm just gonna loop it in maybe off to the side over here. That way it serves as its own stopper per se, because if you put it through the same loop you just did, it could still uh, tighten on itself. So I'm putting this through off to the side. And all I've done was just wrap it around. So it come up, went down on this side, and then made a loop through a different three sets, three strands, a, a different three strands. Um, now the blog did not go into detail about this. This is just what I'm showing you guys that I came up with and that I did that worked out really well for me. So at this point, I don't need my needle anymore. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the slack that's left over. See if you see here now, this isn't moving and this isn't moving because we wrapped it around itself right there. So it went down and then I went up and around a different piece. So that won't move and that won't move. My slack that I have left over, I'm going to take it and I'm going to just tie a square knot between Oops, between these two pieces here. So I'll show you guys right here. So the square knot my husband had taught me, he's a Boy Scout for so many years, uh, left over right and right over left. So there's that guy there. And right over left. And if you're still not comfortable, just tie like maybe two knots. Uh, again, this isn't going to unravel by any means. Um, you've already got it woven onto itself in two places here on the back. So you're not in any danger of, of this piece unraveling. And then cut off your tail and there's your little piece. There's your ended piece there. And then here's the back. And then all I do is I take this little, I have this little stamp I have here. It says handmade from the heart. Take that guy and then I just stamp it in the open part back here. That's just my own little personal step that I put on a lot of my different projects. Um, that's how we do that there. I'm not sure if that was really good, you guys. I don't know if you were able to see a lot of it. You guys let me know. Did you want me to do another one or do you want me to maybe come, you know, in this one and then come back with a different tripod and I'll give you more of a, a downward angle? You guys let me know. Um, let's see, I only have about seven of you here with me, but tell me what you guys want me to do. I'm not sure that you were able to see the angle very well. It's a lot different for me because I can see my work down as you know first person perspective of what I'm doing and I don't know if you guys were able to see exactly what you wanted to see out of that Stacy you're okay you were able to to get the the steps it wasn't too difficult I just want to make sure before I end it I mean today was pretty quick I'm used to hanging out with you guys for a couple hours so <laughs> I don't want to go but I understand if if you know if we're done we're done but um, I'm gonna wait to hear from you guys you guys tell me what you want do you want me to do another one or do you want me to come back and do another one different color with um, maybe a different angle? So you're just watching. Okay, Donna, but did you see, like, were you able to see the steps? So if you were able to come back to my video, you'll be able to watch it again and, and, and take a good look. Again, I'm going to post the link to the actual uh, blog that I followed and they have step-by-step -step pictures. I just thought maybe the, the live tutorial might help with a little bit more um, because I did come across a couple issues. But um, I just want to make sure you guys are ready to do them. If you want to make them yourselves, it's super, super simple. I just was hoping that I was able to give you guys what you wanted to see. Um, all right, good to go. All right, so um, I might just do a separate video just for YouTube itself, and then maybe I'll add it to the and I'll edit to the other one. Um, so uh, if I do that, I'm going to do a different angle with my other tripod and just do a recorded video. And then I'll post that one on there too, because I really want you guys to be able to see a really good, a really good view. Um, so if you're watching this on YouTube, keep watching. You're going to see, uh, I'm going to cut in right next with um, the, um, the hands down view. I'm going to have a different tripod so you guys can see better what I'm doing. And I have it right in front of me. 
Um, so keep watching on YouTube. And then for you guys on my Facebook Live, I'm going to post it separately on my Facebook page. And then, of course, you can always go to my YouTube page and all my videos will be there, including this one with the new extra added piece on it. Because I really want to make sure you guys see exactly just how fun it is and how easy it is. Hello guys. Okay, so this is take two. Um, I just wanted to do a better view or a different angle of the actual uh, weaving process on these cute little stars I did a Facebook Live on earlier for you guys. I just wanted you to guys to see more first person view. Um, I didn't feel like the angle on the video was good enough, so I'm just going to add this into my, my YouTube video. If you guys are watching on YouTube, thank you so much for sticking around. This is just another angle of what you just saw. Um, and then if you are catching this on my Facebook channel or my Facebook page, uh, thanks for coming back. Um, just going to add this in um, as a separate post so you guys can see in more detail how we're going to do these all this little weaving pattern. I, I just wanted to make sure you guys had a really good view. Um, a lot of t a lot of this would have helped me had I been able to have access to it. The pictures on the blogs were very very helpful. I just wanted to see the actual process and see if maybe what I was doing was correct or not. But so what I'm doing here is we've already gotten the cardboards uh, cut. We've added the uh, festive Christmas theme cardstock scrapbooking paper to it, and then we've added a colored push uh, colored plastic ball push pin to the end of every corner of this star. Uh, paying attention to make sure that we have placed that needle in between the cardboard where the little squiggly cardboard lining piece is. That's why it's important to make sure we have this thick of a cardboard when we're using it for this project. So here's where we're starting to attach the yarn. I already had a sticky on this corner but it came off. I uh, had a little bit of a issue so you, I'm just going to add some more glue up here just to this top corner. I'm just going to add a little bit more glue there. And then I'm going to attach my yarn, just stick it right to the glue, right in there, just to make sure that that guy's in there and he's secure. Now, not to worry when you see that happen, because as we weave and process this, um, all of these corners, as you can see here, all of these corners end up becoming um, a solid piece. You can tell here that not any one of these color uh, corners are going to be coming apart or you're not going to be seeing anything on the back either. So one of these corners I had put, I placed the glue and started the yarn on. You don't see any of that. So don't, um, don't fret if you're worried about maybe I didn't use enough glue. Um, just use this. I used as much, as little glue as I possibly could for my tape runner for my scrapbooking. So now that we've chosen that this is where we're gluing the yarn on or taping the yarn to, this now becomes the back of your project. So you're going to take this and face it away from you. And you're going to make sure that that corner you're starting at is your top right corner of the project. So you're holding it facing you. So now um, on the blog, the rule of thumb that they said was a great guideline to follow would be um, every time you're making a rotation or a turn on your project, you want to go down two pins and up one. So we're coming down the front of my of the project. There's one pin. Here's the second pin here. So one and two pins. So we grab the yarn, we come down two, and then we're going to go up one. We're not going to go back up two because two is where we started at, right back up here. So we're going down two and we go up one behind on the right. Uh, then you rotate your project and you do the exact same thing. You go down two, up one on the right. Rotate your project, down two, up one on the right. And then there's another good guideline that I came up with was no matter what you're doing, you're always working from one corner to the next. You're never going to go off at a diagonal when you're making your, your downward rotation. So I always try to say, okay, which square? Because it's going to be a perfect square facing you. It's not going to be, right now, we're, as we're holding it, the back cardboard is a diamond shape. You're never going to work on that piece. As you're making your first rotation, you're only going to be making the perfect square per, uh, portion that's facing you. So down two is actually on this square edge, okay? down two, up one. You rotate to your next corner, and now we're working on the back square. Do you see? But you're still making a perf... You're, you're following the straight square line, not the diamond that's now on the front. So down two, up one. Rotate, down two, up one. Rotate, down two, up one. Rotate, down two, up one. And now we've made one full rotation on every, every corner of this star. 
So you can see that the square is coming for this square. Uh, every line is straight on this square. And then there's another square right here that shows up for every every item there. Actually, no, I'm sorry, one more. One more, now we're at a full rotation for the full project. So you have basically two squares. You see a square that exists right here, and then you have another square that's now uh, the diamond pattern, which is the cardboard facing us on top. Now as we're making our second round, all we have to do that's different is all you're gonna do is just try to um, be mindful to place your next round just slightly to the left of the of the line that's or of the round that is already there. So as we work, we want to take our our yarn and place it just slightly to the left of the existing previous row. So do you see here? Here's my first row, and I'm placing my yarn just slightly to the left, almost layering it in a fashion. So down two, up one, and then placing my yarn just to the left of the previous row. And if there's a little bit of gap or space, do not worry about it. It'll eventually work itself together, or it might be there and it might lend a little bit of quirkiness to your project. I haven't had uh, any any bad projects come out of this just yet. So down two, up one. And I'll just do more of these rounds to show you guys. As you place your, your, your next rows just slightly to the left of the previous row you were working on, um, the pattern starts to show up and it starts to become more apparent and then it starts to get a little bit more exciting and you can start to see that you know the the project that you are envisioning is coming to life and it's it's actually quite fun and see here I almost made that mistake of going to the right always go down straight line straight line that's so easy to make that and I, I've done it I mean I've, I've got a little addictive as you can see here I've made just a few <laughs> um, and although I, I made all these within the same 30 minutes um, all these guys I made last night, it got really addicting after I got the pattern down. It was it was just really addicting and fun to make them. And see, it looks here that my, my pin is having a little bit of a problem here. I'm just going to bend it a little bit. <clears throat> kind of adjust that there like that. And so we just continue on. Weaving and weaving and weaving all these little guys together. And you'll see, you'll get a pattern going and you'll get a, a little routine and a rhythm going to it and it becomes so easy and just super simple and extremely cute as the more you form them. Um, now this white yarn is I mean, you can see some of the stuff through it as we make it, but if you can see the pattern that's emerging on all the corners, um, to me it looks like that really cute sweater pattern, that Christmas sweater design that you see a lot, and um, I just don't think that there's any way that even if a little bit of paper color, there's like a few holes popping through here and there, I just don't think that there's a way that any of that looks bad. I mean, your loose-knit items um, don't really ever look that bad to me. So again, you just keep working slightly to the left of the, the row that you worked previously. And you're always going to go down two, up one. Down two pins, up one pin. Or down two corners, up one corner. However, it's easiest for you to uh, see your work or you know, you know get that pattern or that, that rhythm worked out. We're all different, so whatever works for you go with it. That's the best way to do it. So I'm just going to keep running around each corner. Down two, up one. Down two, up one. Down two, up one. And then every time I come up the one, I grab my piece and I rotate it. Down two, up one, grab the piece, rotate it. Down two, up one, hold the piece, rotate it. Any way I have to do in order to get that whatever my, my down two is, is a straight line down. So my down two will always be straight down from corner to corner. Rotate it straight down, corner to corner, up one. Down two, straight line, up one. Down two and a straight line, up one. And if you, you guys can tell here that the pattern is starting to merge around each one of those corners already. Uh, we've done quite a few little, little, little rounds here, but nothing... Um, 
nothing too time consuming. Um, and then of course I've got, a, you know, I, I'm trying to pay attention to the camera angles. It's the first time I've done anything like this uh, to show you guys any kind of close up work. So I'm kind of working around my tablet here, like I'm hugging, giving her a hug while I'm working so I can see you guys are work, uh, so I can see what you guys see, just to make sure that I'm giving you a good angle. Um, to show some of this more close-up stuff that you just don't get from a picture or two. No. Sometimes it really helps, at least in my experience, I think that it really helps to have um, a full tutorial or a start to finish. I like to watch people stumble. I like to watch them discover different products. I like to also, our projects, or I like to discover the creative process. Everybody has a little bit of different reaction. Some people get really super excited. Some people get really, really quiet, but no matter what happens, the, uh, the end result ends up being gorgeous and everybody's happy. So that's the stuff that I enjoy. And I try to make my videos about that same, about within that same, um, theme I guess you could say theme um, so I'm just going to continue to keep wrapping these up I'm almost done it looks like some of these spaces between these little star points have a little bit more room than others and my remedy that I came up with was I mentioned before in the earlier video um, I, I just do a double round when I get towards the end of some of this now so you can see here this project there's not much room left between this one but yet if you come around to some of these other ones there might be a little bit of a gap on this guy here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to take, I'm going to start to wrap two. So there's one and normally you'd come up, sorry, let me start that over so you guys have a better view. So this is like my, this is going to be my last rotation around all eight corners, but I'm going to add a double line on this square part. Um, this right here is what it looks like when you're finished with the blog uh, directions. And this looks awesome and it's beautiful. And then the back has a nice open piece in it. So you can actually place maybe a picture or something back there. Um, but I like to try to fill some of my gaps on these other ones. And what I did was I did a double round instead of, I did a double down two, if that makes sense, I'll show you guys. And then the end result looks something similar to this. So you have, well, actually it's not similar. It is this, you have two yarn pieces or two strands on each square corner here. And it creates, I think, a really cute patterny, almost like a snowflake, you could say. You, you get almost a snowflake feel. See, this is what the blog is when you just end with one. And then I added a double row on every double down. And it kind of looks like a snowflake to me. I don't know. I just, whatever it, whatever it is, it's, it all makes me happy. <laughs> so here's where the back would be your regular standard if we finished it off. So when you add those double two, you get a couple extra little remnants back here but the back to me doesn't the back right here to me is actually still appealing this is still really cute to me I think this is really cute and you know should you catch a picture you know a piece of this on the back of your tree I don't think that that looks bad um, personal preferences are always going to be what you want to go with so if you prefer to have a, a cleaner back go ahead and stop here and just go ahead and tie off your project I'm going to go ahead and continue on making mine with the two rows of a double down. And here I'll show you exactly what I mean. So we're going to start as though we're doing the next round. So go down two. And normally this is where you would come up one on your right. Go straight back up to the same round where you came down from and do a second one right next to it. And now on that rotation, you'll come up to your right and rotate your project and then go down once we're going to go down twice rotate and then come up one on the right rotate your project and i'm just doing that on each round for the next eight or all seven oh, you know, sorry are all eight of them and i think that's where i get that little bit extra of a snowflakey type look to it and, it and especially since this one's white we'll see how prevalent it comes out and if it if it really appears to be the way we intended. But that's basically how I, I decided to fill in some of these little gaps. You can see that one might be a little bit thinner here. You can see this the cardstock or the scrapbook paper through there. Um, that's just my fix for, for you know, maybe my, my, my measurements could have been off, may have been backwards when I was cutting the original cardboard, something like that. There's always a way to, to, to find a way to fix it or to give, you know, a little bit more of a forgiving 
a forgiving way to cover up some of those small little accidents we have, little happy crafty accidents. So here's now, that's why the back looks like it's got extra pieces on it because we, we did a, an additional down two in order to get this cute little snowflake look, I think. So now that I have all this, I'm going to push this where it belongs and then I'm going to cut my yarn long enough. I'm just going to guess, you know, I'm just going to guess right here and say that I need about maybe that much because I'm just going to make the hanger on the back about, yeah, about that length. That, that, that seems good to me. So, I mean, if you want to take a look here, this is probably about maybe, maybe 12 inches. It's definitely too much but it's going to be exactly as long as I feel it needs to be. You know, you have to guesstimate while you're making it to, to make sure. And I see this came undone just a little bit. I'm going to finish this off. I'm going to come back, make sure it's tight. And then um, the piece where we're coming around with, I hold it in front of me as though it is going horizontal. And then where um, I see this piece going in is, you see here, this is where your piece is coming from on your left. I pull it straight across here and I'm going to feed it under all of this, all of these little yarns right here on the back. So in order to do that, I mean, if you can pull this through with your hands, um, more power to you. I cannot, I don't know if it's just my fingernails or whatever the issue is. Um, I also don't want to tug too hard on any of these um, existing weaves or rounds because I don't want to loosen the project. So what I do is I've got my yarn needle and I've got a yarn threader. You know, this is basically exactly the same stuff that you use in sewing, uh, except for it's on a larger scale because it's designed for yarn. Um, and I've, I've had all this in stock. This is stuff I've used because I crochet as well as sew a little bit, but I, I crochet and I have all this stuff for different projects I've made in the past. So I'm just feeding my yarn through. And of course it, it got a little stuck here, there we go. So I'm just feeding my yarn through the yarn threader you place in the eye of the needle, you put your yarn through the little wire piece here, and then you pull through, and that's what, that's basically how that happens here. It does the job for you of trying to get the end of the yarn through a very, or into a very kind of a tight spot. So, got my yarn ready to go, and then I'm going to show you here, this is where, let me just make sure I got this lined up again. So as we're holding our project, again, we're coming from the left side. I'm going straight across. So right here is where I'm going to make the actual loop that's going to come out that we're going to hang the project from, like on the, if you were to use it as an ornament on the tree. Um, I mentioned in my video, I'm super excited to use these as uh, actual uh, bows or, you know, um, finishing a little add-ons in add -ons to my Christmas present wrapping, my gift wrapping. So here what I've done is I've just gone under probably about three strands, and that's just something that I guessed at. This particular step here that you're seeing does not exist in the blog. They just had said tie things off. So I'm just going to show you the steps that I took in order to get the end result of this little tie here on the back. Let's see if this one's uh, better, better to look at. So, you know, see we're coming up on this side and then we're going to come through and I'm going to show you how I wove it around this side and then we're just going to tie it in a square knot. So now that I have the three, I have my needle under the three strands right here. I'm just going to pull that straight up and I kind of tug it a little bit, well not around there, hold on. I tug it a little bit to the left to keep that straight and then I need to make sure and pay attention on the front here that that piece didn't actually get moved a little bit too loose while we were doing that. If so, just kind of pull it up and loosen it like you would a, um, a shoelace. And then push that right back down where you want it to be. Pull it a little tight and hold it. And then pull right here. So now you've got your project where you want it. Uh, what I'm going to do just for safekeeping is I'm going to go and repeat the same process. So we pulled it through on the, sorry, we pulled it through on the top here. I'm going to go ahead and go back in and loop it around those, you know, just in the same area, the same area, just one more time. And I'll show you, you'll see as soon as we finish this, and again, you're going to get stuck on all of these little pins. And actually what I'd forgotten to mention is push all your pins in now. We are completely done kneading them stuck out because we're done with the weaving. So I literally am just pushing all the pins 
deep into the project so now you're completely done with this on the front and then you got these little cute pops of color here where your push pins are so now that I'm sewing this stuff won't constantly get stuck on it so now I've just pulled that through there and do you see how I kind of it's coming up from this side here but I just looped it around in order to make a little bit of a more secure tighter um, tighter point right there for it okay so we're gonna come back down on this side now and then I might go over just one or two so that it doesn't kind of the, the piece we're gonna we're gonna wrap around here I don't want it to slide this way and then the white the opening for the for the the hanger piece might uh, become closed at the bottom so I just kind of came over to the right I guesstimated and just put the needle in down here and I'm gonna start feeding that through this way and then here's where I put my finger up here and I'm gonna just hold things and put, pull my finger back out I think that's probably good enough for a hanger that's basically how long it would be when it's hanging off of the tree or wherever you're gonna place it this would actually be really cute in a rearview mirror too you'd have to make this a little bit longer uh, but I also thought these would be cute if you made these a little bit shorter um, you could put them around the neck of a um, a gift of wine or maybe some Bailey's Irish cream to, to someone special. These would be really cute hanging on the fronts of those bottles as gifts as well. So now that I've made the length, I'm, pr I'm pretty happy with, with, with this. It's, it's all basically a guess, guys. There's no exact amount of, of measurement. Just what, do whatever you feel is comfortable for this amount to be uh, your hanger for whatever you're going to, whatever purpose or wherever you're going to hang it. And then go right back in around the same area again doesn't have to be exact and just make another loop similar to the first one we did on the other side and then you'll see here still got a little stuck on that so you see here we pull that through I've got a loop on this side and a loop on that side and no one says that this isn't something you can do by hand. You can just kind of feed things through there. My fingernails make it a little bit difficult to do some of these this smaller sewing work. So that's why I always use my yarn needle. So now that we're we're done with the yarn needle, we can take in take that out. Right now all I do is I take my my extra end piece I'm going to cut off and I take one, the left side of the actual hanging loop and I just uh, I just make a square knot. And let me do this up here so I can kind of see over my project. So I go right over left. Pull that down. And then left over right. And if you want to, you could do a couple knots. I'm just going to do the one because I'm very confident that that square knot is going to is not moving anywhere. And I'm going to cut this piece off here. You get as close down to the project as you possibly can, or whatever makes you you know feel good about it. Uh, the back of the project is not crazy important unless you're going to use the back like on this guy here. Um, this one is the way the blog had given me instruction um, and then you could place a picture in here even you don't have to use cardstock and then this is what the back of the project looks like the way I did it where I added the additional two stripes on every uh, basically on every square piece and that's the front the way the blog has you do it completely I mean it's not crazy difference it's just you know a little bit of preference and this is just a little bit of creative outlet you know a little bit of creativeness I came up with to change it just a small amount um, and then I put a little stamp on all my stuff I make. If I'm able to stamp it, I always have this. My mother got me this stamp a long time ago and makes me feel good too to put stuff on there. And then everybody gets a little bit of a happy little, oh, this is handmade. So put a little bit of love in everything, right guys? <laughs> and it's also the holidays, so you have to get a little cheesy. So there's the end product, you guys. I'm really hoping that this angle helped you out better. Uh, and also using the white yarn and, and as opposed to this uh, striped yarn. Um, I'm still working on my YouTube videos as far as getting you guys a better angle so that there's not so much busy stuff going around you. So I'm hoping that maybe um, you guys got a better view and a better idea of exactly how to get the weaving down right on this, uh, you know, this particular project. They're just way too fun and way too simple. Um, I just want to make sure I can help whoever I can help. Um, I, I just try to do exactly what I think I would want to do as a beginner crafter or as a noob. A newbie, but uh, 
you guys let me know how you feel and, and if you guys like this new angle. Um, some of these smaller detailed projects I will still continue to do this way. I don't know if I have any this small with this detail in it um, planned going forward. Um, I do have a Santa cone that I'm going to show you guys, but I believe that those are big enough and there's not as much detail work as this was. This was definitely something I wanted you guys to see uh, the pattern of how to get these things down. Because let me tell you, as soon as I figured it out, I was making them like crazy. I think I've got about seven or eight of them now. So these are probably going to be uh, gift tag type little extra goodies that'll go on, on presents. So you get a present on top of your present this year from us. Um, and that's about it, guys. Just let me know how you feel. If you guys need anything else or if you want any other um, tutorials, keep up the, the, the comments and the ideas. I absolutely love the, the support that you guys continue to give me. Um, so... Uh, once again, thank you so much for watching. Um, and if you're on YouTube, it's going to cut back to the end of my other video. If you're on Facebook, uh, just leave a comment and, or you can attach some pictures if you guys decide to make these and let me know how you go. And everyone, thanks so much and take care. So that's our ended piece here. This is what they look like. This is how cute they are. Really super easy, simple, uh, really good gifts. And they're, they have just a little bit of air of... Um, what do you call that? Like farmhouse and fancy. So you can do fancy farmhouse. You can do any colors. Colors and options are endless. Doesn't have to be Christmas themed. You could use any kind of floral pattern paper or maybe um, uh, maybe a, some kind of flora de lis or anything with browns, depending on whatever color your tree is. If you're going to use them as ornaments, go with any color yarn. I've got purples, pinks, and turquoises. These are just super festive, super simple, and they're going to look really great on my presents. So when I start to wrap things, I'll show you guys exactly what I'm going to do, and you'll see these guys show up on my gift wrap, and I'll put pictures up for that too. So thanks, everybody. I really appreciate you all joining me today. Um, I hope everybody got what they needed. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please continue to send them through. If you've got pictures, put them through on my, on my Facebook page. I love to see them, and we'll share them all with the group. Um, and then... Um, Oh, yes, Donna, shabby chic. That's another good way to explain it. Uh, farmhouse fancy, shabby chic, you name it. Um, I'm going to continue to put those through. I appreciate all you guys being with me and uh, your continued support. I absolutely love doing this, and I love uh, chit-chatting with you guys, and we're learning so much from each other, and that's the whole part of, part of it is let's all learn and grow together. So thanks again, guys. Um, I'll, uh, I'll be in touch, and until the next video, take care. Bye-bye.